All right, hi everyone. I'm Justin, this is Valley Hockey Talk. Today I'm talking to you about one of hockey's top prospects in Shane Wright. Now if the name sounds familiar, it's because he was granted exceptional status to play in the OHL at 15 years old. I'm gonna get into all that in a second, but first I wanna thank everyone for watching. Remind everyone, please like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. Okay, so like I was saying, Shane Wright was granted exceptional status. He is an exceptional hockey player. And a lot of people are saying that he's going to be the next generational talent because not a lot of players are given that exceptional status from the OHL or the CHL for that matter. So I'm going to go through Shane Wright's player profile, get to know him a little bit more. I'm going to talk about that exceptional status. I'm going to talk, talk about his draft eligibility, his scouting reports, and his statistics. I'm going to talk about if he has a little bit of competition for that 2022 NHL draft. All right, so let's start off with that player profile. So he's 16 years old. He was born January 5th, 2004. He's from Burlington, Ontario, which is in the GTA. He's six foot tall. He's 183 pounds. He plays center, very important, and shoots right, also very important. And he is eligible for the 2022 NHL draft, as I just mentioned, and he was granted exceptional status by the OHL. Now, the only other players to be granted exceptional status from the OHL are guys like Connor McDavid, John Tavares, Aaron Ekblad, and Sean Day. Now, obviously, based on those names, um, they're all very good players. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to turn out to be generational talents. Um, obviously, Tavares turned out to be a very good NHL superstar, and McDavid is truly a generational talent. So I find a lot of times, like hockey people, hockey media, like to throw out that generational talent title on guys. And, you know, there's only going to be a few generational talents within those generations, right? So anyways, still being granted exceptional status means that you're a very good player, and especially at that young of age, and if he can continue to progress, I think he could definitely be, and if he continues to progress, I think he will be an NHL superstar. And who knows, maybe that leads into a generational talent. So he's still young yet, lots of time left, but this kid's numbers are just incredible. And I'm gonna go through a scouting report next, just so you can kind of get an overall idea of how this guy plays. And I actually am gonna attach some highlight reels in the uh, description so that way you can take a look at those and check them out. And in terms of the scouting report, so most scouts and the stuff that I've read, stuff that I've seen watching his videos, he's a very dynamic center with game-breaking skill. So that just means that he can turn the game on at any moment and he can change the game. So if a play needs to be made, a goal needs to be scored, uh, he can be that guy. He has a high hockey sense, very high hockey IQ. He thinks the game so well. He sends very high hockey IQ. He thinks the game so well. And he's an elite skater, as, as most of these young NHL stars are, incredible skaters, the McDavid's, the McKinnon's, the Eichel's. And he has a very high hockey sense to go with that skating ability as well as being an exceptional playmaker. And he's just such a creative player out there. He can anticipate the plays with his hockey sense. He can make it to areas that, you know, other guys wouldn't be able to make it to because of his speed. He knows where his teammates are going to be. And he can score those big goals with that game-breaking ability. And he is a phenomenal deeker, phenomenal passer, scorer. He just, he's the complete package. The only thing that I've seen that he could maybe work on is just making his shot a little bit harder. Uh, but I think that was just a really minor thing and they were really being nitpicky. So as always, he's going to get stronger as he gets older and that shot's going to get harder. So that's definitely something you can really uh, work on and make better. But for a guy that is good at everything, um, that's why he's being so successful in the OHL as a young player, which I'm going to get into in just a second here. So in terms of his statistics, so I'm going to go back to the 2018-2019 season when he's playing for the Don Mills Flyers, minor midget AAA, uh, which is a very competitive league. And this is in the GTA League, so the Greater Toronto Area League. He had 150 points in 72 games, 66 goals and 84 assists. So he almost had a goal per game pace, 150 points in 72 games. is just incredible. And this is AAA hockey, folks. This isn't just some house league or beer league. This is AAA hockey, high level in Toronto playing with some of the best kids in the country and to put up those crazy numbers that's what allowed him to be given that exceptional status so he applied for exceptional status he was given it in April of 2019 and he joins the likes of the Tavares and the McDavid's of the world and deservedly so with those sort of numbers and also in 2019 of this year he played for Team Canada he was on Team Black in the U17 tournament so this is the best players under 17 years old he had seven points in five games, four goals, three assists, also very impressive. Playing with kids that are older and still being over a point per game. And I believe he was the captain of the team as well, so very impressive. And then the most impressive thing of all is he's playing for the Kingston Frontenacs this season of the OHL. So this is the league where most players get drafted from. So the OHL is a very high level of hockey. It's the highest level of hockey you can have in, in Ontario. Um, it's part of the CHL, so the WHL, OHL, and QMJHL. Uh, these are the three main leagues in Canada. And... You know, this is where the majority of Canadian hockey players come from when they make the NHL. And 
the Frontenacs were the worst team in the league, basically, so they got first overall pick. They got right, and the Frontenacs are almost in last place. They're not a good team at all. He hardly has any players to play with, and he still has well over a point per game. He has 46 points in 43 games, 28 goals, and 18 assists. So if that doesn't tell you all you need to know right there, this kid is just a phenomenal player. Like, over a point per game, 28 goals, and he's playing on a very bad team. Not a lot of help, so... That's super impressive, and that's one of the big reasons why I think this kid will be an NHL superstar, just because he is doing it on his own, and imagine if he was actually playing with some better teammates, which I'm sure the Frontenacs will get in an upcoming draft. In terms of the 2022 NHL draft, he is projected to go first overall, so um, he's probably the most talked about guy to go first overall, especially considering he's in the OHL, he got the exceptional status, playing in the Toronto area, he's going to get most media attention. Now... If people have been following my videos, I did do a video on Matthew Savoy or Matthew Savoy. Um, sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, but anyways, he plays out west and he actually plays uh, part-time between the uh, WHL's Winnipeg Ice and then the Prep School League, so like their version of the AAA. So he's playing at a very high level too. He was actually um, expected to get exceptional status in the WHL. The WHL has never given out exceptional status. Um, so they make it a little bit harder for their guys. Uh, so he wasn't given it, but he is able to play a few games for the Winnipeg Ice. Um, he hasn't been as impressive as Shane Wright, that's for sure. But he also wasn't given the opportunity of knowing he'll be there for the full season um, and getting used to, you know, his lines and chemistry and that sort of thing. So anyways, Matthew Savoy is certainly going to be his biggest competition uh, for the 2022 NHL draft. I'd mentioned maybe it might be like a Taylor Tyler thing. You know, Tyler Sagan, Ty Taylor Hall, both fantastic players. Um, you couldn't go wrong picking either one first overall. They're both very, very talented players. Right being given that exceptional status and then playing so well for the Frontenacs this year definitely gives them an edge of being picked first overall. And next year is really going to be the big year. So once Savoy gets a full year in the WHL playing for the Winnipeg Ice next year, Shane and Shane Wright will have a full year in with the Frontenacs. It'll be a second year. Maybe he'll get some better players to play with. And then both these guys are going to have full years at the highest level of hockey. Uh, possible for them at their age and that's really going to show us what they can do and maybe who should be drafted first overall in the 2022 NHL draft now I know it's a couple years away anything can happen you know they've been projected to be great players for a very long time elite NHL talent uh, prospects for a long time and I think they will continue to progress just like Alexi Lafreniere is doing this year in the QMJHL and he's projected to go first overall he played so well at the world juniors so I'm expecting these guys to kind of have a similar path to Lafreniere and it's exciting to have this race already in mind, maybe a little bit more competitive for these two guys as well, uh, knowing that there's another guy in the draft class um, that you know is very close in skill. So anyways, I'm going to give the edge to Wright right now based on his play in the OHL, but next year, you know, things could be a little bit different. So anyways, definitely check out my other prospect videos, including the Matt Savoy one. And uh, as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.